Hello everyone and welcome to my look at Captain America the First Avenger when the end game drawing ever closer this is one of my favorite films so it's phase one of the Marvel Studios and the last one I haven't reviewed yet so let's open it up open on the Arctic in the present day with some people excavating not only in an old plane but also familiar and spring the outfit frozen in ice our proper opening is in 1942 where a fine man Named Johann Schmidt, by the Hugo Weaving's an artifact known as a Tesseract in the city of Tonsberg, Norway. He finds out a carving the Norse tree of wisdom and fate. I just saw this movie the same summer as Thor. I was trying to determine what direction it would take things, but I'm glad I'm finally reviewing it. I also definitely like how the connections with benefit of hindsight that I know more about. Also, Hugo Weaving is once again playing a character that delights likes humanity. See also the Smiths and Matrix franchise, Owen and the Saga, and the live action Megatron. We then cut to Brooklyn, where Steve Rogers played Chris Evans, a 90 pound weakling who has unsuccessfully tried to written less more than once. His asthma not helping matters. He's willing to stand up to bullies him before he gets his powers. It also turns out they digitally turn really buff Edmonds and the slender Rogers. Also, in Willis, there's yet another comic book role he's head of Johnny Storm, Lucas Lee, 2007 Casey Jones. That night, Rogers' friend James Bucky Burns, plays Sebastian Stan, takes him to World's Fair. Where they meet Howard Stark, played by Dominic Cooper. Rogers tries to enlist again and gets recruited to be part of a new army of super soldiers under Dr. Abraham Erskine, played by Stanley Tucci. I must say, I really like the whole retro futuristic style of this movie's visuals. Reminds me of Joe Johnson's previous one, The Rocketeer, which I find very underrated. Hmm. We then cut to a secret lab where. here, Dr. Arnim Zola, uh, alongside Schmidt. Has harnessed the power of the Tesseract, Schmidt and his sides, and obviously with the executions on Path of Conquest. Our Chester Philip is played by Tommy Lee Jones, Doc Bart Rogers, as with the other recruits, Air Skyne believes he's made a good choice, as is Agent Peggy Carter, played by Haley Atwell. Air Skyne also tells Rogers that, he's, uh, that evening he's not the first candidate he's tried either. He mentions that the serum embolizes the choice takes it, saying that good becomes great, bad becomes worse. There's a contrast the actors also point out with Evans. Stating that Rogers war, uh, wants to save everyone he can, but we even observe that Schmidt is only out for himself. I mean, it's a common way to do this, much like the first film, they, for the hero and the villain, they get the from the same source. Underneath an old antique shop, Rogers is about to undergo the experiments that will make him Cat America. He's given a bunch of serum that turns him from a 90 weekly into a very, very power of the dullness. It also turns out the scene of Carter reaching out to touch Rogers was the first time at well, something like this on the set and wasn't the script. Supervised on the spot. Right then, the laboratory is attacked by a spy. Erskine is killed, but Rogers able to use the power to stop him from fleeing the country. The spy not only loses the last vial of serum, but also tells Steve Hale Hydra to take a sunnet pill hidden in his tooth. With all of Erskine's research destroyed, Steve ends up being the first and last super soldier to work on. Hmm. As Captain America helps raise morale at home, Schmidt becomes a Red Skull, who disposes of his former employers with his weaponry. I must say, we really love the whole USO sequence at the Surf Bank of Man. They, they even created a cover image for the comic. It's always amusing how they were able to recreate the production of the 1940s on $140 million budget and modern technology. And then cut to Italy in 1943, where Cap uh, feels he could still be doing more to help win the war. And then catches one of the POW camp with numerous hostages behind enemy lines, including Bucky. To find Philip's orders, how it's starting to cut how he would to infiltrate the camp to rescue the hostages. He escaped in the POW. Camp is one of my favorite scenes in the movie, especially like how they handle the Red Skull's true form. The makeup looks like a right out of a comic book. I definitely like how the UCG has slowly removed part of Hugo Weaving's nose, similar to what they do with Ray, Ray Fiennes or Harry Potter films. Cap is also given a new suit for his missions, a new shield made of vibranium. He also has enlisted a group of rescued soldiers as the Howling Commandos Timothy Dum Dum Dugan, played by Neil McDonough, Jacques Dernier, played by Bruno Ricci, James Frostworth, played by JJ Feld. And Jim Marita, played by Kenneth Choi. Given the action against Hydra that ensues, I submit this trilogy is much more faithful G.I. Joe adaptation than the actual ones did. During the skirmish on the train with how Zola, played by Toby Jones, is captured, Bucky's lost in the mountains. Zola also tells Phillips about the Red Skull's plan as well as how powerful his weapons are. Hmm. Now, the finale is upon us, as Zola has given the Allies the location of Hydra's last base. Cap infiltrates the Red Skull's plane, and so his bombs will be interested in the world. So he stops one of the bombs, while turn one of the Hydra soldiers into a pile of red goo. Cap confronts Red Skull in the middle of their fight, the test would be too much power for Schmidt to handle, and he vanishes in a flash of light. 
Cap realizes that he has to put the plane down the Arctic in order to prevent further damage. If you have a cursory knowledge of his origin story, it's a very dramatic ending. Surely the captain will reassure everything things will be alright even when he knows they won't. So the close of victory for the Allies coming at great cost, and Cap waking in the present day. So he witnesses the war around him after being greeted by Nick Fury, playing him with Hampshire Jackson. He realizes all the ones he cared about are dead, though too old to remember him, saying, I had a date. As the last one to have to leave to the Avengers, this film is one of my favorite single hero movies of Phase 1. The movie's great taking Captain America's origin story and a fantastic pop action adventure in the Joe Johnson's Rocketeer. Even in a summer where the final Harry Potter film will the roost, so it made $176 million in the US, $370 million worldwide at the box office, proving to be another big hit that kicked off one of the favorite trilogies most US has had a hand in. I've been wanting to review this movie for ages, but then when the end coming soon, I'm glad I'm finally able to. I finally think it's just a half star to four. I think I might take a look at the Ang Lee Hulk film and the 1990 TV Captain America has some bonuses, now that I've finally done all the most movie movies I haven't yet. I'm also still working on my potential aspect of the X-Men movies to get ready for Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. That's all for now. Later. <laughs>